So Todd White is a famous teacher who has a big following, and he recently repented for having the wrong gospel. According to a post made by the American Gospel on Facebook, they wrote, As many of you know, Todd White called the American Gospel Christ Alone documentary dynamically inspired in a sermon posted in May 2020. The message was in response to some coordinated efforts by our team, Costi Hinn, and the friend of Todd's to lovingly show Todd his false teaching compared to scripture through the film. After that video went viral, the original sermon was soon deleted from the Lifestyle Christianities page. Yesterday, 7-26-2020, Todd White livestreamed a message where he explained how he's gone through a season of painfully pruning over the past months. I am not perfect, but I am strongly convicted. I feel like I just met Jesus again. There's just this rekindled thing inside of me. This has been the hardest season of my life. I'm like, Lord, what are you doing? He said, I'm pruning every branch that you have. I'm like, it's not okay, it hurts. And he said, if you were dead, it wouldn't hurt. Todd explains that he's been reading Charles Spurgeon as well as Ray Comfort and says that it's taken 16 years for him to realize the importance of preaching the law of God in order to show us our sin and our need of a savior. Here's the deal. One day you and I are going to face the Lord. It's the truth. Are you guys with me? Is this too much? I've been going through it, buddy. I've been in a new place to bring the reality of the law into a witness, to show a person their need for grace. How can you want to be found if you don't know you're lost? How can you want to see if you don't know that you're blind? How can you want to live if you don't know that you're dead? I saw this when I got saved, and for some reason it's taken me 16 years to explain it, and I feel like I've just seen something completely brand new. What I won't ever do is take the miraculous out of the gospel. It's a miracle that I come to Jesus through all of my junk and all of my sin and him say, not guilty. That's a miracle. Todd even reads Ray Comfort's parachute illustration, which explains how the God has a wonderful plan for your life message falls short to give the right motivation for coming to faith in Christ since it ignores our sin and the holiness of God and holds out false promises of blessing when scripture promises trials, tribulations, and persecution. This method of evangelism by blessing was critiqued in our film, American Gospel One, Christ Alone, which shows how Todd's street evangelism never includes the truth about our sin, God's holiness, justice, why we need a savior, repentance, etc., but elevates man's value and worth in a therapeutic way. Tom now admits that he hasn't preached the whole gospel and says that he's repenting of this. This is hard for me because I feel like I haven't preached the whole gospel and I repent, I repent. You have no idea. I will not be responsible. I believe that when I preach, the blood of people is on my hands. Now, don't get me wrong. It takes a lot of guts to tell your congregation that you've been preaching a false gospel to them for the last 16 years. And I'm glad that he was man enough to admit his faults. I really am. But what worries me is how this was actually a realization to him in the first place. It should bother us that people who boast about being saved have no idea what they're being saved from. The timing of this was odd because a friend of mine actually texted me today because he's witnessing to a friend of his who claims to be Christian, but also claims to be New Age or Shaman. So in the text message, here's how the convo went. So in the conversation, my friend starts asking her about why she has the moral code that she does and how that relates to her Christianity and her claiming to be a Shaman. But to cut straight to the point, he just said, what makes somebody a Christian? And she writes, a belief that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. And he said, Savior from what? She said, the full wrath of God. What is it that causes God to have wrath against us that we need to be saved from? She says, sin, our sinful nature. So you'd think that man has a sin nature. If we believe in original sin, dot, dot, dot. I believe we're here to learn lessons and tools for our soul's journey. Okay, then what is God saving you from? And then she punts the emoji that says, I don't know. And then she says, if I say there's nothing to save us from, I'm not a Christian, right? And he wrote, by your definition, yes, or am I missing something? And the conversation goes on from there, but you get the point. Now, what's scary is that people who believe that they're saved have no idea what they're being saved from. And now after seeing Todd's White video, I know that this shouldn't be a shock to us if people who actually are leading in our churches are just as clueless about what we're saved from. Now again, I do want to curse this sort of thing, and I genuinely am happy that Todd now acknowledges the basics of the faith, but I am sad that he's been teaching his flock something different for all of these years. But better late than never. Now when it comes to the part where he starts talking about the disappointments that people will have when they expect a happy life and instead they get what the Bible tells us to expect, which is like trials and tribulations, I'm glad that he realizes how damaging that is to people's faith. I know this firsthand because I deal with atheists on a regular basis. Most atheists can point to a specific time when they started thinking that God didn't exist, and that time is usually centered around expectations that they had that God never met. 
The problem is these expectations that they had weren't biblical in the first place. They learned these things not from the Bible, but from people. And those people weren't getting these things from the Bible. So when they didn't get the things that they assumed that God promised, they concluded that therefore God must not exist. And this is why it's so important for us to do our best to get the gospel right. Lisa Gunger and her husband were actually famous worship leaders and music artists who suffered the same fate. They left their faith for similar reasons. And I go through their reasons one at a time in detail in this video and clarify what the Bible actually teaches about those things. So go ahead and click on this video to learn more. But the next time that someone tries to give you a false gospel or the prosperity gospel, what are you going to say? What?